What's going on, everybody? I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday afternoon. This is MYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm just bringing you some updated news surrounding the New York Mets in terms of their starting pitching staff and some more rumors going around the New York Mets. Now, according to Joel Sherman of the New York Post, the New York Mets are exploring the options of potentially trading starting pitcher Carlos Carrasco in looking for return, a young, controllable starting pitching option. Now, I understand why they would want to do that. Carrasco has been a guy who's struggled with injury issues. He's a guy that's getting up there in age. He's 35 years old now. He's been up and down in his couple of seasons as a Met. And if you trade him, maybe you can get yourself a younger arm that's under more control at a lower salary. And you can give an opportunity to a younger guy like David Peterson or Tyler McGill or even Alicia Hernandez who they picked up in a trade with the Miami Marlins earlier this offseason. <laughs> now to be honest, I wouldn't personally do it. I wouldn't do it. Now Carrasco last year wasn't that awful. The ERA was a little bit questionable. But I mean he made 29 starts last year and had a 15-7 and record. His ERA was high. Yes, it was 3.97. But he had 152 strikeouts and 152 innings. He was an innings eater. The Mets picked up his option earlier in this offseason to keep him. And the one thing I worry about, if you trade away a guy like Carlos Carrasco, you are putting a lot of faith in a 39, soon-to-be 40-year-old Justin Verlander who made one start in 2020 and 2021, although he did bounce back in 2022 and won a championship with the Astros. You were putting a lot of faith in a 40-year-old starting pitcher. And Max Scherzer, who got injured not once but twice in 2022 with multiple forearm and arm injuries, he only made 23 starts. And he whittled down the end of the season. And he's going to be 39. Plus, you're putting faith in a guy like Jose Quintana, while he's a solid pitcher, he also has had injury issues at times too. And as much as I love the signing of Kodai Senga, he's going to be only 30 years old. He's got that lively fastball. You are right now putting a lot of faith in an unproven guy coming over from Japan and three older pitchers that have not been proven to be healthy every single season. And what's one of the things that you need in Major League Baseball? Proven depth. And Carrasco actually had a pretty decent year, and he was a proven depth guy. <laughs> so if I'm the New York Mets, I'm not trading him. I want to keep as much depth in the starting rotation as you possibly can. Because you really don't know what you have in the rest of these guys in the rotation from start and start in and start out. Plus, Tyler McGill and David Peterson, in a way, are still unproven. Are they, are they relief pitchers? Are they starting pitchers? Tyler McGill was pretty much injured all of last year. He had stints of brilliance and he had stints of being horrendous. And David Peterson, I think he's more suited for the bullpen. And Alicia Hernandez was not good last year. He was in AAA. He was that bad. You don't. You can't have enough starting pitching. Just like in the NFL, you can never have enough offensive and defensive line depth and cornerbacks. In basketball, you can never have enough big men. In hockey, you can never have enough good defensemen. And in baseball, you can never have enough starting pitching. <laughs> Look at last year. Jacob DeGrom missed pretty much a lot of the season. Max Scherzer missed most of the season. Chris Bassett was ineffective. Even Carrasco missed some time. Tyler McGill missed time last year. David Peterson missed time. And you already lost three starting pitchers this offseason. Chris Bassett yesterday signed with the Blue Jays. Taiwan Walker signed with the Phillies. And obviously Jacob DeGrom signed with the Rangers. And like I said... You're bringing in an unproven player while he has incredible upside from Japan. He's never pitched a single inning in the major leagues. 
You're talking about another guy who has been up and down his whole career, but had a solid year last year with the with the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals always seem to get the most out of players. And you're bringing him over here thinking he's going to be a proven guy. And you're talking about the top of the rotation, as good as they are, they are also both going to be or a little bit under their 40s and have had injury issues the past couple of years. And you have no proven starting young pitching right now. Most of your good young pitchers are still in double, are still in single or double A. I get why the New York Mets were doing it. And if you can get yourself a good young arm that could come in and be a proven viable option in that rotation, go ahead. Because I don't know if Carrasco is going to be here after this year. But if you're just going to trade him for the sake of trading him, don't do it. You're going to need him out there because you never know what could happen in Major League Baseball. And if Verlander and or Scherzer go down during the season, if Senga isn't proven to be what you're hoping to be in his first year, and if Quintana gets hurt, you need as much proven depth as you can in the starting rotation. Plus, honestly, the starting pitching wasn't the main problem with the New York Mets, and that seems to be the main focus with them so far this offseason is they have absolutely just dismantled that starting rotation and put it back up. They essentially replaced Jacob deGrom, Taiwan Walker, and Chris Bassett with Kodai Senga, Justin Verlander, and Jose Quintana. And soon possibly could be Carlos Carrasco. The only guy that's remaining in the rotation is Max Scherzer right now. Carrasco gets traded, and Scherzer was not good during the, down the stretch, and he got injured twice. <laughs> So I understand why you'd want to make a trade with Carrasco. He's 35 years old. He also has had injury issues, but he's also an innings eater. He had a solid year last year. Not spectacular, solid in terms of his win-loss record. Innings eater, good amount of strikeouts. Do you really want to just trade that guy away for an unproven young starter? As good as he might be, he's still unproven. If I'm the New York Mets, I'm not trading Carlos Carrasco. I'm keeping him on the roster. And I'm going to see what he does this year. And if you really aren't believing that you're not going to bring him back next year, then you can maybe trade him away for a, a bat, or you could trade him away for a younger, controllable starter. But in terms of my rotation, after what happened the past couple of years, I am not trading another pitcher. I want as much depth on this rotation and proven depth as you can. And that's including Carlos Carrasco because he probably should be in the, in the rotation. And at the same time, you can never have enough starting pitching. So that's just my little breakdown, a little video I want to make for you guys. If you guys like this video, hit the like button below. Sub up if you haven't already to NYG Jeffy T 85 for more breaking news, updates, and chatter around the New York Mets. Turn on the bell for notifications of the next video or short dropping surrounding the New York Mets. And let me know in the comment section if you agree with me that the Mets should not trade Carlos Carrasco for a young proven depth for a young proven arm that might not be as proven and you have a good guy, you have a good depth piece either way in that starting rotation to begin with. Let me know how you feel about the comment section. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Take it easy. And as always, let's go New York Mets. All you got to do is believe in those boys from Queens.